We'll let everyone grab a seat. Love the lighting. Let's pray to the technology gods, everyone. This is going to work. For those of you that uh, haven't met me or know me as KB or STEM Queen um, and can't find me anywhere on social media, it's at KBoychuk. Uh, just for something like really interesting, don't marry someone from Transylvania, FYI. You get a really janky surname and you can't, no one can spell it or pronounce it. Um, before we jump into it, I'm um, 20 plus years in tech, five years in crypto and the last three in Web3. And um, before we jump into a really long conversation about the future of Web3, I did want to take a, a second to really kind of acknowledge that we're on Nam land and um, want to pay my respects to the First Nations people of this land, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and give my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. The thing with Indigenous culture is that they have been the very first media of humanity and their practice of dream time and telling stories and song lines and their practice and their gift to us of the word Dadiri. And the gift of the word Dadiri is about deeply listening so that we can understand each other's stories and pass those stories on for future generations to learn from. And so I think that it's striking that we're having a conversation uh, today about the future of decentralised media with two incredible greats, Keith and Farouk. Um, I'm really hoping they magically appear on my screen at some point in the next few seconds. The so do we. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we did. <laughs> we did it. Hey, can people see us? Yes. You look oh, amazing, amazing, by the way. You, you do what? look fabulous. Oh. You're surrounded by unicorns and a little bit amazing. of sunshine. Perfect. And this has been sponsored by Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Well played. Um, let's jump in. You're the last act before lunch. Um, which is code for beers at the pub. So let's jump straight into the question, shall we? Now, sure. there's a lot of newcomers. I reckon we're about 50% deep Web3 and we're about 50% first NFT conference. Um, so I'll let you, <laughs> you calibrate your answers accordingly. I'd love to hear from each of you why Web3 media? You know, Keith, let's start with you. Why, why take a 100-year-old brand like... Time magazine into Web3, like who, who sees that job opportunity and goes, yes, that's my dream job. Well, so, I mean, first, um, it has become my dream job um, and I've loved it every step of the way, but there was no plan when I joined Time three and a half years ago to take it into Web3, right? Um, uh, you know, my background is I, I started my career at Wired and Ars Technica. And I went over to Bloomberg Media and came over to Time. And, you know, each step of the way, you know, I'm brought in to think differently about brands and how do you think about sort of evolving them forward. Um, when I came in to Time three and a half years ago, we had a totally different plan. But the world was a different place three and a half years ago, right? It was pre-COVID. And, you know, as we put into place the plan that we we thought we were going to implement to turn around this brand that had been neglected for probably I'd say 10 plus years, uh, um, uh, what we realized was was COVID changed the environment and, and we quickly had to change um, our strategy. You know, there's this great philosopher in, in the States um, that goes by the name of Mike Tyson that says, you know, like everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth, right? <laughs> and um, and that's what we found ourselves in 2020. And right now I'm I'm upstate New York. We're about to celebrate Thanksgiving. I'm at my mother-in-law's house. And in 2020, I found myself at my mother-in-law's house living up here with my wife and daughter. And um, I was walking around isolated and I was really lonely. And I'm sure everyone in Australia was lonely. And everyone I know where, you know, um, uh, Farouk lives in Montreal was pretty lonely. And um, as I found myself lonely, what I realized was, um, wow, my digital identity is actually equal to my physical identity. It's not like an add-on the way that I had thought about it prior to COVID. It's actually equal, right? Because this is the only way in which I'm having connectivity with other individuals. And as I started to realize that, it was a really interesting recalibration of how I started to look at, you know, how I valued myself both digitally and physically. And I came across the technology of, of NFTs 
And I thought it was fascinating because in my mind, if I saw them as equal, if I wanted to own something physically, I would also want to potentially own something digitally. But I didn't really think anything of it until um, February of 2021. And in February of 2021, there was a sale on the NFT space with Nyancat. And I don't know if you remember that, but our owner, Mark Benioff, sent it to me and he said, um, did you see this? And I looked at it at that moment and I said to myself, wow, um, we could do this. And everyone looked at me and said, like, what do you mean we could do this? And I said, let, well, let me ask you a question. Do you all understand why a cat with the body of a Pop-Tart farting a rainbow <laughs> just went for $500,000? And everyone looked at me like I was crazy and had the same reaction that the two of you just had. And Farouk's heard me tell the story a hundred times at this point, because in full disclosure to everyone in the audience, he's a dear, dear friend. Um, but um, what I saw was that what people were really valuing was memes. And what I saw in the value of time was what time a hundred year old brand had was a hundred years of analog memes. What that red border was, was a actual analog meme. And when you think about it and you think about time, almost every person I've ever come across in the past three and a half years has told me their favorite cover of time right? Because it brings you back to something that you experienced as a kid. They'll say, I grew up with time. It was in my grandparents' house. I read it. I learned English. And it. Very few people have ever told me their favorite article in time. And that's not an insult against the edit. The edit's actually excellent. But what it means is, is that time is a very visual brand. And when I saw that, I, I knew that we could slowly enter into the um, Web3 space. What I really began to realize when I met people like Farouk and others in the space is, there's a huge difference between audiences, which is what time has, and communities, right? And at that point, when I started to really make that distinction, and I saw it earlier in my career with Ars Technica versus Wired when I ran them both, you know, an audience just shows up and leaves, right? A community gathers together. I really began to um, realize that we could do something special in terms of building a community within time that was far stickier, far more engaged and far more immersed with our brand. And ironically, and I love that I'm on stage with Farouk on this one because Farouk always gives me kudos, but I'll give him kudos for a second. In June of 2021, Farouk tweeted the equation for how a Web2 brand exists versus how a Web3 brand exists. And it was such a simple equation. And I told him, and I and I always give him credit, but I've never actually given him credit while he's on stage and I tell the story. Um, but he said, in a Web2 brand, the equation for success is brand attracts a creator who reaches an audience, right? So picture what that means for a brand like Time. Time finds a writer who grabs a topic. You all of a sudden go to Google, you search for the topic, you see it's the writer you like, you see it's the by time, you trust time, you trust the writer, you read it, you leave, right? And in between as a brand, we actually monetize that. In Web3, the equation's quite different. It's community uplifts a creator, and then a brand's job is to uplift the creator further. And by uplifting the creator further, the community uplifts the brand, right? So it's very confusing for the creator, right? But for the brand, what you have to realize is like you have to step out of the way. Now, all of that was amazing because it solves a big challenge for a brand, right? It, you know, media has only two revenue streams, episodic revenue and annuities. And so episodic revenue is marketers and annuities is subscribers. What this does is it creates a higher value annuity for the brand. And it allows you to actually capture that revenue up front. And ultimately, it also coincides with a shift in global privacy concerns around consumers. And so when I saw all that, and I'm going to cut it short for a second, I had to jump in. And, you know, everyone thought we were nuts until like yada, 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 12 months later, we did $10 million in profit, USD. 17 yeah. million gross. And would be one of the leading case studies that I am using to talk about Web3 transition to the largest companies in Australia. So um, well, thank you. It's, a, it's an incredible first 12 months and thank you for being um, a well-used case study for me. Um, Farouk, I remember getting Twitter Spaces hosting powers as an Australian and feeling like it was a miracle. 
<laughs> and it never occurred to me, like ever, that anyone would conceive a Web3 media brand on a platform that is, I think, just over a year old <laughs> um, at scale that, you know, we would have competitions to see how many rugs could occur in one Twitter space and you have built <coughs> an entire Web3 brand around it. Talk to us about, like, how did that happen? That would be amazing yeah. to hear. Sure. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really fun. And then actually, we launched January 11th this year, so we're just 10 months old. Uh, the idea of Rogue Radio came to me on September 19th, 2021, so a year ago. Uh, and then from from concept to like making it happen took like three two months. Uh, and then uh, and then uh, and then then ten months later, here we are. But the way it started was just like we're on Twitter Spaces. I had been building brand on social media already for 10, 12, 13, 14 years at this stage. I don't even know how long from like Tumblr to Instagram to Clubhouse to Twitter and whatnot. And so I had already mastered this like media and community building side of things, right? Uh, and, uh, and so we're one night we're on Twitter and I was hosting one of my spaces that just lasts like 10 hours long. <laughs> that was how we were doing last year, like all bull market. And it was on a Sunday. And then at some point there's someone in my discord, cause I had a discord that I created 10 days prior on my birthday, which was like house of Farouk where people could just come and chat. Cause I wanted to build community outside of, uh, outside of, uh, outside of, um, outside of, uh, what was I saying? Um, you know, Twitter. And then, um, and then, um, uh, Someone in Discord wrote a message saying like, damn, it sucks. I have to leave and go to sleep because I have to go back to my $11 uh, uh, job, an hour job. And I, and I swear to God, we still have a screenshot. And I was like, well, and I'm on spaces and I'm like, what? Can we like build some sort of like media company or like media brand or whatnot? Just through the idea out there that like, where like we can actually like incentivize participants, right? Not consumers, so network participants now. So that's from Web2 to Web3, kind of like he was talking about the consumer is now replaced by becoming a participant, can get rewarded for being there somehow for learning, for educating themselves on, on entertaining themselves with, the, with regards to Web3 and NFTs and crypto. And then um, and then at the same time, the creators who are on here also can get something out of it. Uh, and then that's at this point where my friend John Na, photographer, he's like, yo, like, I know this woman called Mel and she's a, she's a genius. I was like, she's a freaking genius. And like, you have to like bring her up on stage. She's in the audience. Let's talk to her. She's like this like wizard. I'm like, okay, let's go. So Mel comes up on stage and she's a fellow Aussie. She's the reason why, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in here right now, uh, with, with Keith talking uh, to the NFT fest. Um, and so, and so here we are, here I am like talking to Mel. I'm like, holy moly. Like for the next couple of days, it's like, just me, like, like kind of like, Barfing my ideas of like how I could picture like Web3 media becoming, which the thesis and the ethos has stayed the same to date, but a lot of things change, right? Because it been changed since a year. But like the I, core idea of like a decentralized Web3 media company ecosystem platform exists was like that was it's the, this, that was the idea. And then Mel just like drew it like on the blockchain. Like simply put, like you know, thanks to Mel and then Sneak Dow, Will Papper Ian, and these guys that Mel put us in with. And so, and so fast forward, you know, uh, a few months, we launched like a free membership pass, uh, which was a regular membership pass back uh, last December on the 22nd. Exactly. It was free mint. Um, and, uh, and then that led to minting the first NFT, the Genesis rug reader NFT, which is those rugs that are token yielding, um, on January 11th and, uh, fast forward 10 months, uh, we've done about, I think 15,000 ETH in volume across the membership pass and Genesis rug reader NFTs. Um, we've, We've launched over 20, 25 shows. We have, you know, we're, we're expanding towards like other platforms right now, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, uh, and whatnot. And we have a whole like writing arm, uh, co writing content, written content arm and, uh, you know, and shows in different languages from like Spanish, uh, the show in Mandarin is killing it right now, French, um, and a bunch of other, uh, you know, kind of like places being, uh, being set up right now. While uh, the show I'm hosting, co-hosting with Mando and OSF, um, GM Web3 uh, has become quite a, like, kind of like a, a, an essential in the space where, like, we can, like, you know, jam and have a good time, but at the same time be able to collaborate with uh, with some large uh, brands and partners like, you know, Uniswap, Ledger. And most recently, we did the Dot Swoosh uh, announcement uh, for Nike through our platform. And so, yeah, it's been a lot of fun uh, to, to, to do it that way. And to answer your, your question just quickly regarding Web3 Media, what it looks like. To me, it's just like, at the end of the day, like, 
what Web3 is, is I think a media company becomes Web3 the second it starts incorporating blockchain technology. And so for me, like the way I like to approach it is less like, I don't want to token gate access to information, education, or content. That's not really our vibe or our style. I think that should be democratized and free for everyone. Because if we want to onboard the masses, education has got to be free. Like we can't like token gate that. But like in the back of it, the fact that Rogue Video is like this, like it's actually not just a media company. I like to refer to it as a tech company. So it's a tech company that empowers media, right? And that gives it a platform, right? And then each individual creator becomes its own platform within the ecosystem being built. And so the more you empower these creators, the more they're going to put the content out and therefore be able to get a, a mass participants and reward these in our native token. And then, uh, which help grows the network after that. So it's more like a, we approach it really more as like an ecosystem and like from the tech side. Uh, and that's what I think makes a difference between like a Web 2 media and like a Web 3 media. It's not necessarily that we only talk about Web 3 or just have shows about NFTs and whatnot, though most of the content is that for now. But like it's mostly like the technology that enables the media being created on top of it um, at the moment. Thanks, Roke. Um, a question for you, Keith. We saw Time announce um, a partnership with Toy Boogers and we're starting to see kind of mm -hmm. time studios. And we had a conversation yesterday that I think like, really captured people's attention here at NFT Fest in Melbourne, which was we are almost shifting from an age of collecting art and in NFTs to collecting content. And that type of content from Web3 is really rapidly changing. And we're gonna see far more production style, Netflix shows, Apple TV, et cetera. So can you just share with this audience that may not have heard of Time Studios and what is the vision of that 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 deal? And and um, it feels like you're also now paving the way for how to take uh, an NFT collection's art IP into a different medium. Sure, so so actually, I, I love that you bring this up. We, we've done three deals so far, one with uh, Pablo Stanley um, of the Robotos, one with uh, Will Lee of The Littles, and also with Doug with Toy Boogers. And um, actually, Doug is the one that's the least furthest along, but is coming along nicely. Um, but both Pablo Stanley's um, creative and uh, Will's creative of The Littles has gone into production with Nilvana, which is one of the largest production houses out of Canada. And um, Time Studios was founded, uh, I want to say, uh, three years ago. And um, you know, really the premise was, was, you know, when you think about time and coming to time, why do we have to play in certain content types? Why can't we play in long form content, right? Why can't we play in high quality production? And, um, you know, if you saw the Inspiration4 documentary on Netflix, um, we did that. Um, ironically, uh, um, you know, like we also did the Kanye West documentary that was on Netflix, we produced, um, and others. Um, but, you know, what I saw in Web3 more than anything else was, um, uh, I would say, unfiltered creativity, right? And if you think about um, what you were, what you see in the movie theaters today, right, like a lot of it is, is um, I would say, repurposed or, you know, um, sequels to, you know, things that we've all grown up with or we've seen over and over and over again. It's not really truly original, and what I saw with Web3 was unbelievable original content. Like, and I'll start in like the easiest way to digest it. You know, one day my daughter walked into my home office and she saw on the screen, the Robotos. And I said to her, and she's nine years old now. And I said to her, she goes, wow, what is that? And I said, what do you see? And she goes, I see science and math. And I was like, that's so interesting, right? And I realized like, this is so much more than just sort of a collectible marketplace, right? That you could actually develop these characters out of more just flat 2D images into something that has much larger story arcs. And so Time Studios is a huge division that has people whose professional jobs is how do you develop story arcs? How do you develop much more robust characters? And so in working with these Web3 creators, you know, we, we help develop out their IP. Now, why does that matter, right? Like, I think it brings a whole new sort of genre of originality into the space. Um, it also matters because, you know, um, uh, you know, the traditional gatekeepers who've said yes or no, or thumbs up or thumbs down, don't really matter as much. It becomes the community that matters because the community votes with their dollars, right? And the community also votes with their attention. And we could see beforehand that like, not only is, 
Pablo beloved by the community, right, for Robotos and Humankind. Not only is Doug beloved by the community for Toy Boogers and others, um, but we have people who are super fans because they have ownership stakes in some of these characters, right? And so I'll give you like a really, can I give a really fun example? Farouk has never heard me do this example before, but I'll give you a really fun example of why it there's value in mining from Web3. And I never thought I would do this remotely over a stage, so bear with me, okay? Imagine if I said to you, I'm going to create a community, right, as a business plan. I'm pitching to you a business plan right now, right? And I said to you, I'm going to create a community, and that community is going to have 5,000 assets. Those 5,000 assets are going to have 2,500 owners. Those 2,500 owners are going to um, be super fans. They're going to create story arcs for us. They're going to create fancy elements. They're going to create events. They're going to promote it. There's going to be extensions of tens of thousands of fans that extend out of these 2,500 fans, um, super fans. Um, oh, by the way, in, in a year or so, it will do roughly $25 million in secondary sales, and it will do 2 to $3 million in profit. Oh, and, and there won't be any overhead or inventory. Um, are you in on this business? Like, your answer would be what? Yes. Right. I okay. I also have a thousand okay. NFTs, so I'm not the person to ask that question to. Okay. To be. Hold fair. on. Hold on. But, but but now imagine if I went in the traditional path and I was like, I'm going to present to you a community, and we're going to call this community Crypto Dick Butts. Like, there's no established <laughs> company that starts right that starts with that. And there's no business, no business on the planet. Maybe Adult Swim. Or like, like, but no, like Procter and Gamble's not accepting that, right? Like, there's no business that's going to take that on the initial pitch. But when you look at what I just described to you, the business I described to you, the business of Crypto Dick Butts, which is an amazing business that has emerged organically from the Web three community, and I use it not because, um, uh, you know, I I think it would be great IP for Time Studios. It does not fit with our our vision. Um, but what I use it because it's a great example of. It's the most ridiculous example and wonderful example. And by the way, I do own some, right? So I have to be in full disclosure. Um, but I use it as a great example of, of what happens when you allow the community to reign free with, roam free with their creativity. Thank you. Um, that's such a great example, Keith. Um, disclaimer, I do not <laughs> hold any crypto dick butts. Um, Farouk, <laughs> on, on, that same, on that same thought, though. Um, and the Follow that up, Farouk. Follow that one up. I, <laughs> I love my dick butts. I love my dick butts. I actually am a proud owner of a crypto dick butt OG, which is from night one. Um, only 161 of those. Um, so, yeah. Anyways. Sorry. Farouk, we, we, a question about the future of rock radio in, in that um, streaming, streaming NFT music and Web3 content in particular, long form, are now starting to become conversations that are coming up, particularly, you know, that Twitter is is going down that same route and you're kind of seeing Elon really playing with long-form copy, um, streaming capabilities, um, subscription capabilities for users as well. Where do you see streaming and... or even things like a standalone app for Rug Radio? Um, what are those sorts of things happening, you know, when you look at your strategy moving forward? Is it beyond radio and, and really expanding to other forms of media? Yeah. So, I mean, that's something we've already had in the works for months. Um, and so, like, I think the media should be across all platforms. So no matter what it is, because you can't just say, oh, we're going to Web3 and like we're going to leave the platforms tomorrow. Like you're just not going to make it right. Because like you have you need the Web2 platforms because what Web2 did properly is like gather millions, billions of people within one network, right? What Web3 adds to that is that it manages uh, to, you know, first of all, it amplifies the network effect by a lot, but also manages to build rewards and and to build everything that we're trying to build on top of, like, uh, you know, particip for participation on top of it, right? Um, and so I think that the way we approach is like, yes, you stream everywhere. So my morning show is on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, YouTube, uh, we do clips for Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is, right? You're across all these big Web2 platforms that you can go and get to people. But we've been having uh, a platform uh, in the works. Minimum Viable Products is almost there. Been grinding it for a minute now, but it, it'll come when it'll come, right? And then, um, which is going to allow you 
to use, you know, our NFTs, our access tokens, right? Like our membership has or our um, rug video Genesis NFTs, you know, to access a platform that will be able to reward you for doing uh, more actions than just like listening on a, a platform, right? I think that's what the evolution is. Is like less like, like I said earlier, I'm not a big fan of the token gating of content. Um, but I think that what can be token gated is access is like perks, uh, rewards, uh, you know, learn to earn programs for like, we actually ran a large test of learn to earn early on when launched our radio. We did a four week program of like called when DAO, when token, you can still find on YouTube for free. Right. But you had to have the NFT to pass a test to, to learn about all these things. So to learn, it was free to everyone. You don't need to have an NFT. I don't want that, but to pass the test and be able to get rewarded in our native rug token in order to, for, for having gone that information knowledge, you had to own the NFTs. Right. So I think that's what, that's where the platform comes in handy. It's for like the extras, right? And um, and also for storing, like ideally one day, I hope like all the content's gonna be on chain, right? So because that's when you get really decentralized when it comes to like, you know, uh, censorship and whatnot. I think it's very important to add all these different like aspects. So it's just gonna take, it's gonna take a long time, right? Like I'm talking like years here, but it's gonna happen like that slowly. Like it's gonna be like this like, a flip from like the web two platforms right now into more web three native ones. And then we'll see when there's another big platform that's going to come. I mean, I have no interest in like building a social media network, yeah. right? But definitely have all the interest in the world to have a presence in different uh, social networks and especially the future web three ones. We'll see what, what it is. I mean, we had Stani Kulachov on the show not long ago, co-founder of Ave, founder of Lens Protocol. What he's doing looks interesting, right? If I know if it's going to make it and if I know if it's going to make it or not, I don't know. But uh, it looks very interesting and promising, right? Or like all the platforms right now uh, becoming more Web3. So Instagram and Meta, right? Allowing uh, you to connect your wallets and have Polygon digital collectibles, right? NFTs, right? And whatnot. What's cool with our NFTs, our rated rug radio, the ERC721M, which is a collective that was built and created by Syndicate DAO. We were the first NFTs to launch on the contract. And it allows you to build social platforms on top of the blockchain, right? It's super freaking cool. But also... By via the NFTs, you can track and curate content better towards the, the your 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 listeners, and therefore reward them in the form of whether po apps, NFTs, token, and whatnot for doing this. And and that's where the the the, the NFTs become dynamic. So like when I think of all these things, like I know at the surface, like you see rug video, this and that, but like there's so much tech behind it, mm. and what this tech enables, we just haven't even scratched the surface yet. But it takes time, it takes money takes people, takes, you know, all these things for it to happen. But that's definitely where we're headed. Like any web, any platform right now, Web2 that opens Web3 at some point with RNFCs will be able to tap onto it through the blockchain and like be able to like maybe one day create a better experience for people or like actually like see what they like and, and what want to listen to and whatnot. So, or read like all these things. So I think in my, like that's very like bigger, broader picture to answer you. Uh, and now all the little things you see us doing every day at Rogue Radio is every little thing that I think could lead us to that point, whether it's in a year or two years, three years, five years, like, you know, it'll come. Can I, can I, can I just jump in on one thing? You know, um, you know, ultimately web three, the difference on web two and web three is, is choice, right? Um, like it, no matter if you really wanted to simplify it down, right. In web three, you have the choice. Do you want to be an online renter as you have been, or do you want to be an online owner? Right. And Web3, you have the choice. Um, do you want to control your personal information or do you not? Right. In Web2, you're not presented with that choice. And right now we're in such an early phase where like what you see is what Farouk just said is all the technologies that are emerging from that choice all of a sudden presenting those two choices presenting themselves to consumers for the first time ever as it relates to being able for the first time ever to be online owners and control your own privacy. And those are important sort of shifts in the media landscape that every brand is going to have to sort of recognize over time as more and more consumers enter in and don't even realize that crypto is even behind the scenes in this ecosystem. Yeah. Um, we are approaching the end of our time together. I did want to wrap up with um, just two, two rapid fire questions with answers from each of you. We have a lot of builders and found first-time founders in the room. What's your best piece of advice for them? And secondly, what do we need to know about what's coming up for Rug Radio holders and for timepieces holders? Keith, you want to do the others? <laughs> I mean, I would simply say, you know, we are all 
reading from a blank page right now. Okay, so um, nobody knows the answers, which we dovetails into sort of like the what's next. Um, uh, we're all learning from each other, right? Like Farouk is one of my closest friends. We talk every day, multiple times a day. Um, uh, and I learn just as much from Rug Radio as I'm sure he learns from me and how I think about sort of traditional media uh, organizations evolving into this space. And I think that um, uh, you should never allow sort of uh, your belief uh, blind you from how quickly this environment is changing, right? What was true six months ago might not be true today. And so I think you should just make sure that you're constantly sort of open-minded and fact-checking yourself, right? Because the terrain is changing fast. Um, as it relates to what's happening with time, I mean, uh, we're just going to continue to evolve the organization. And, you know, um, uh, we will continue to integrate it in, to become more of a core aspect of everything we do as it relates to subscriptions and access. And, uh, you know, like, I think that the reason that we haven't done it so far is, is because it's at such an early stage that, that it would confuse more time readers than it would benefit. But our goal is ultimately to, over time, sort of cross that Rubicon so that way there's no Web3 strategy, there's just a time strategy that moves forward. Love that. I love that. Um, just quick, because I'm sure your time's up, um, is uh, you asked what looking for what to look for for rug video but the first thing oh a piece of advice uh yeah. for for advisors and whoever's in there honestly it's like like i wish i could cuss but i, I so i'm not going to i, I had to hold it's myself Australia, to the you totally can oh so keep fucking going like <laughs> yeah. there's no like there's, there's like straight up like no like there's no fucking secret like in the space like there's no like look at everyone coming in today. Keith sent me your Porsches coming in, Crown Royals coming in. The other day we had Nike on my stage. We had Javashi on our stage. And then like within within this, now that's the web two side. Now web three side, like everything that's like coming in within, like what's being built from within is like so awesome too. Like I've never been more excited to be surrounded by people and founders within web three. I'm talking that like want to actually make the place better. Like, you know, it's like I, I like to think that I, I, and I'm bullish on like what we're doing in media wise because look at what happened in this last uh, couple of weeks the de debacle right Keith debacle of like SBF and like FTX and look how it's being reported I mean damn SBF is speaking on New York Times stage next week you know what I mean like it's ridiculous right and so and so like it's just like there is such a big need in my opinion for like uh, rug radio and other decentralized like media platforms to come in and and like let's all work together that would be mostly my message to anyone trying to get into media in this space we want to work with everyone and empower everyone because we need it and then uh and so but just really keep going because um there is there's so much to learn and there's no better time to educate yourself and become a better like advisor founder uh holder community member and whatnot like yeah i'm having so much fun right now with our community and with what we're building it's like and it's like there's less noise and i think that um the path is pretty clear towards where we're going and then what's coming for us i mean our next big announcement is next wednesday uh november 30th um live at miami in art basel uh we're going to make the announcement uh from 5 to 9 p.m of final 5 to 5 45 uh, for the next steps of Rogue Radio, just a fun little thing that we've been working on for four months. And besides that, it's just like, you know, um, we're just going to keep pushing the mission forward one day at a time. Like there's no, there's no stopping. Right. So let's go. <laughs> um, let's give it up at a really big Melbourne. Thank you. Yeah. Shout out to, to my Keith crypto punks in the crowd. Hell yeah. Amazing conversation. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank honestly showing up for our Aussies. I know it's late at night for you guys. We really appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. Go Aussies. Thank Let's you. Go. Love y'all. Peace.